beautiful trial was given by Sister Faith, Brother Ayo, and um, Brother Shil. Uh, those that were in our Sunday school this morning, you must have heard a lot about one faith, faith, faith. People talking about what God did for a particular um, faith among us. That's the faith that just sang for us. That's the one that God said will live, and she lived, and she's still living today. And she's able to sing that even now, her anchor holds in the Lord Jesus Christ. May our anchor hold in Jesus' name. Amen. You are all welcome to our service this morning. Um, the Lord is happy to have you around. It's a bright and wonderful day, and may it be wonderful in your soul as well. Amen. And we also want to welcome our internet audience, those that may be watching us from wherever they are located all over the world. Um, we are happy that you are part of the service today, and we pray that as God is blessing us here, he will reach out to you wherever you are. 
If you live locally or you visit anytime, we'll be happy for you to worship with us. We are Apostle Faith, and we're located at number 13 Penhee Road, and that is in Bexley, London, DA53EP. And God will bless you as you join us. We will now um, blend our voices together to sing, and um, Brother Godwin is going to be our song leader. We'll sing first from um, number five of SS and S. Thou whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard and took their flight. Today, all the chaos and the darkness that may be in any heart or soul here will take their flight, Amen. even at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sing with us and God bless you. Take verses one, two, and four. One, two, and four. speak that same word this morning, Amen. and as he caused light to come, may God cause his light to shine in all hearts this morning. Amen. Our next song will be Ancient Words, Ancient Words, <clears throat> and it will be projected for us. We're going to take it thoughtfully, thinking through it over. It's talking of the words that God himself has given us, handed down not by haphazard any moment, but by miracle from age to age to age preserved for us. May God help us to take hold of those words. We're going to take it from the chorus and then we'll take verses 1 and 2 together. This side we'll take verses 1 and 2. We'll all sing the chorus together. Then this side we'll take verses two, uh, 3 and 4 and then we'll all close with the chorus. So chorus 1 and 2, chorus 3 and 4, chorus. I hope I'm clear. Okay.
help us to truly come with open hearts that God's ancient words, the words he has spoken from the beginning, will work in our lives. 699, SSNS 699. Oh, brother, life's journey beginning. With courage and firmness arise. Look well to the path, to the course thou art choosing. Be earnest, be watchful, and wise. Remember, two paths are before thee, and both thy attention invite. But one leadeth unto destruction, the other to joy and delight. God help you to follow his manner. Amen. May God help me to follow his manner. Amen. We're going to take, um, <clears throat> all of us will take the first verse. Females, you'll sing the words of that second verse to us men. Hopefully, God will help us to hear it. Amen. And then verse three, men, you'll sing those verses, that verse to the ladies. I hope I'm clear. Okay, verse one all, verse two the females, verse three the males.
you now in SSNS. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I will follow on. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow on. May God help us to be true. song before prayer is 590. I have given up all for Jesus. This vain world is naught to me. All its pleasures are forgotten in remembering Calvary. Though my friends despise, forsake me, and on me the world looks cold, I have a friend that will stand by me when the pearly gates unfold. And you know what? That's what matters. Yeah. May God help us to yeah. note and take hold of what matters. 590. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the singing of this song, I pray that we have all decided for Jesus. Yeah. So we'll all take the first verse. The second verse is telling of when things get low. When those tough times come. If you have passed through those tough times. And you can from your heart give the testimony. Join us to sing that verse. Amen. Verse 3 tells of the, those who have gone just beyond the ways of Jordan. Some of us have people waiting for us. Amen. If you're one of those. Join to sing verse 3. Uh -huh. And we'll all join to sing the chorus. Uh -huh. God bless you.
Our Heavenly Father, Amen. we thank you. Amen. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for the love of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for the love in your heart that sent Jesus Christ to die for us in this world. We thank you for church. We thank you for Sundays. We thank you for your heavenly wisdom. We thank you for giving us the privilege to be here today. Glory be to your name, O oh Lord. We thank you for heaven and we thank you for the earth. We thank you for all the amenities that you've showered upon us in this world. But Lord, help us that when that pearly gate will open, that we will be found there. Amen. Let all the consummation of our sacrifices in this world, of the least labor that we have labored in your vineyard, that that labor will culminate, that when the pearly gate is open, you will be found there. Amen. All the tricks and the traps and all the wonders of the devil, we rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ. We stand, O oh Lord, against all these insinuations that you help us to make heaven at last. We pray, O oh Lord, this hour where all your people are gathered to praise your word and worship your name that you will be in their midst. All that are sick that you will heal, you will save souls, and you will sanctify and baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire if we sing it like a song, the song of salvation that you honor it in heaven. If we sing it like a song, the song of sanctification, that you honor it in heaven. If we sing it like a song, the song of the Holy Ghost baptism, that you honor it in heaven. Lord, we have come with diverse problems. The one that is in the spirit, the one that is touching our souls, the one that is in the mind, the one that is in the physical. We know you can solve all problems. Help us to go home rejoicing that we have come and we have met the Lord. Oh Lord, prevail for us. Prevail for us. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
Our Bible reading is taken from the book according to Prophet Malachi chapter 3. We'll begin our reading from verse 2 through 7, then 13 to 18. Malachi chapter 3, verse 2. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap tree. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. For then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the former years. Five. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the idolaters, and against the false swearers, and against those that oppressed the herring in their wages, the widows and the fatherless, that turn aside the stranger from the right and fear not me, says the Lord of hosts. Six, for I am the Lord, I change not. Amen. Therefore, we sons of Jacob are not consumed. Seven, even from the days of your fathers, he are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, Amen. and I will return unto you, Amen. saith the Lord of hosts. But he say, wherein shall we return? From verse 13 to 18. 13, your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet he say, we have, but what have we spoken so much against thee? 14. He have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? 15. And now he called the proud happy? Yea. They that walk wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often, Amen. one to another, Amen. and the Lord hearkened, Amen. and had it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and taught upon his name. Amen. 17. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spared his own son and that served him. 18. Then shall he return and consign between the righteous. Sorry, 18 again. Then shall he return and descend between the righteous and the wicked, Amen. between him that served God and him that served him not. Your 
courage to renew. Do not be disheartened. I have news for you. It is no secret what God can do. What is done for others, He'll do for you. secret what God can do. Did you hear some testimonies this morning? Did you hear some life and death issues this morning? God says in that passage that we all read together, I change not. It is no secret what God can do. And this morning, if you will open your heart, God will so help you that you too will witness and have that witness in your soul that truly it is no secret what God can do. Amen. Let's open together to the part of our Bible reading that we read this morning, Malachi 3. I'm going to start reading from verse 16. Then they that love the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. Amen. And a book of remembrance was written before him Amen. for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Amen. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. This morning the Lord would have us consider the long game. The long game. You know, it's good to be in good books. Yeah. It's good to be in someone's good books. Mm -hmm. Especially when that someone is somebody who is well-placed to give you a helping hand in future. It's good to be in their good books. Mm -hmm. God here is talking of, he's, he has leaked a secret to us. God is telling us that he has a secret book. Yes. A book where they that fear the Lord and speak often one to another that the Lord could hear and hearken and write their names in that book of remembrance. And he has kept that book of remembrance safe with him. That book of remembrance is waiting to be opened <laughs> at 
the end of the long game. Yeah. May God help me and you to play the long game. Amen. You know, when we talk about the long game, it's usually in the business world to talk of, don't just look here and now, and because you're trying to grab this and grab that, you lose so much so that the big picture that could have been a grand picture because you've run around for the little things, you have destroyed the bigger picture. <clears throat> you know, when we're saved, we're excited, we're bubbling in that new life, we're like that little, new, new, little baby. You know, I don't know if you have watched the new little babies. They're always excited about everything. They're excited to touch. They're excited to see. Mommy, what is that? Daddy, what is that? Oh, a bird. They're excited because life is in them. And as newborn babes in Christ Jesus, we are excited. Excited about Jesus. Excited about the new life. Excited about the fact that Jesus Christ took us out of sin. Rescued us from the power of the devil took us and translated us, not a partial rehabilitation, translation, transformation, picked us up, changed us, zapped us, brought us into his kingdom. Amen. Definitely we'll be excited. Amen. Definitely we'll be rejoicing. Definitely the, the, the witness of the Holy Spirit is always alive in our hearts. But God is just reminding us this morning, sending a little word of warning, in your excitement, in your in exuberation, remember the long game. Remember the long game. You know, I used to, I still do. Actually, I played it with her last night, my little girl. We played notes and crosses. And um, when we first started to play, she'd be so happy. She'd say, yes, I've, I've, I've won, I've won. But by the time she's, it's her turn to put her mark where she thinks she has won, because daddy has years of experience, <laughs> he has already won. Ah, uh, how come? <laughs> Why? She's looking at it with her short focus. She's playing the short game. <laughs> Dad can sit down and relax. He's got his strategy. He knows what's going on. God is saying we need to play the long game. Spiritually, we need to play the long game. You know why? Because actually, it's not a game at all. This is life and death matter. Not just physical life and death, but eternal life and death matter. So may God help us to be astute. May God help us to be awake. May God help us to be alert. And play that the spiritual long game. That is why in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17... God warns us. What does he say? 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And God is letting us in into the secret. And the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. <laughs> Do you see the contrast that God is putting there? Love not the world. Neither the things that are there. If for any reason you find that the love of the world is in your heart, God is saying clearly and practically in his word, it is because the love of God, the love of the Father is not in you. Why? Because all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not from him. It has nothing to do with him. And that, all with all its woof, ah, you, yeah. It is all doing what? Passing away. It is only here for a time. But God is saying, 
my child, my son, my daughter, deal with eternity. But he that did the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Mm. In other words, God is saying, don't, after I have given you the, 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 the blessing of catching an elephant, you see the bush rat that is running, and you drop the elephant, you're running after bush rat. Can you tell me how many times of the bush rat have you gotten the elephant? God is trying to bring us back to realization. Don't be, they call it penny wise and pound foolish. Oh, it's too, it's too expensive. But the petrol you're going to use to go to the place where you want to get it for cheaper, you're actually going to use twice as much. God is saying, play the long game spiritually. <clears throat> what is that long game? To deny the immediate here and now gratification. Oh, yes. Why? For the sake of the far more important game. The far more important winnings. The far more eternal winnings. You see, the life of the Christian is a, self is a life of self-denial. You cannot, you cannot walk this way without having purpose in your heart that you are going to deny self. What do we mean by self? What do we mean by self? This flesh. You know, it has senses. It smells. It feels. It tastes. And they all combine. It sees. They all combine to go in the mind. <laughs> they, 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 they mix up in the mind. Oh, yes. God is saying, because of what is ahead, watch. Now, it is that purpose in the heart to play the long game. The spiritual long game, like Daniel, in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. It is that purpose in the heart that will determine that, God, I want to do it your way. God, I'm, I'm not interested in taking a shortcut, even though it's easier. There's, there's this seeming easy option. It is that purpose in the heart to play the spiritual long game that will cause you to make the positive choices for eternity, even though it may seem negative for now. It is that purpose in the heart that will cause you, as a young person, to concentrate on God and your book. When others are going around having fun, clubbing and all the rest of it, <laughs> you know there's something far more important, in, even in this life, yeah. not to then talk of eternity. Yeah. It is that purpose in the heart, that understanding of the long game that will cause you to choose rather than join your friends and acquaintances and colleagues. <laughs> they are making fast bucks, fast money, but illegitimately. You know how they do it. You can do it too, but <laughs> you decide that you're going to rather endure patiently. Why? You're playing the long game. It is that same understanding of the long game that will cause that male, young male, that young female, <laughs> To flee you through lusts and keep themselves pure when everybody else is doing it freely. Whatever it is they're doing. However it is they're doing. Why? <laughs> oh, may God help us to understand, to gain that spiritual understanding. The long game. Jesus has written your name at the point of salvation in his eternal book. <laughs> Don't joke with it. It is that same principle, that purpose in the heart, not in the head, in the heart, that will cause you to take a principled stand on the word of God when everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is strong with you. Are you, you sure? Really? It is that same understanding that will cause you to be consistent. Yeah. Serving God. That word of God says, in all, in all seasons, in season, out of season, you are doing what God wants you to do. Uh -huh. When the going gets tough, <laughs> that grace of God, that purpose in your heart keeps you going. Yeah. Oh, when many have given up, 
you just find that, ah, thank you, Jesus, you're still helping me to move ahead. May God help us. Amen. The long game. Why? Remember, Revelation 22, 12 tells us. Let's open it together, Revelation 22, 12. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me <laughs> to give every man according as his work shall be. Remember, Jesus says, coming quickly. <laughs> but you see, as human beings, we've forgotten that a day is as a thousand years in God's yes. sight. Yes. A thousand years is as a day yeah. in God's sight. God doesn't deal with time. He deals with eternity. Yeah. Oh, may God help us to remember that. Yeah. Jesus is saying, I come quickly. You know what? The day Jesus will come, you will know that it indeed was quickly. We need to also remember that we were redeemed for a purpose. Mm -hmm. We were redeemed. Our names were written in God's book to take us to the pinnacle of Mount Zion. <laughs> Where the end, the aim, the, the, all the saved of all the ages. The church of the firstborn. Mm -hmm. Where they will finally culminate. <laughs> worshiping and glorifying God for eternity. You need to be there. Yeah. I need to be there. Yeah. May God help us to be there. Yeah. Yes, that's our purpose. That is the long game. Yeah. Yes, because we have been redeemed and our redemption is precious. Psalm 49 verse 8 tells us, what can a man, what, what, what can even the brother give for his soul? He said, for their redemption is precious. Oh, yes, we have been redeemed. But remember, the point that which Jesus redeemed us, he did not take us out of this world. No. We are still in this contaminated world. Yes. I don't know if you were here last week Sunday for the Sunday school, but you know that thing hit me like as if, almost like as if I've never heard it before. When the Sunday school was going on and God gave the teacher that wisdom to, to demonstrate it. And the brother came in, all masked up, Gloved up. Why? Because <laughs> something is going around <laughs> and I dare not be contaminated. Mm. She said that was how it was in the Ebola period. <laughs> you can take sin like Ebola. Mm -hmm. You had better take sin like Ebola. Yeah. When we're talking of the world, you see, there's somebody behind them. There's a spirit behind them. That is why you can't afford to joke with them. When I say joke with them, I'm not talking of you won't talk to them at school or whatever. Yeah. But that unnecessary intimate contact, that unnecessary close contact, <clears throat> unless you don't value your soul. Yes, we have been delivered from the contaminated world. <laughs> but you are better know that the devil has not given up on you yet. Did you hear what I said? The devil has not given up on you yet. Well, yeah, while we're basking in the world and we get glories and victories from time to time, oh yes, we're on the mountaintop. <laughs> yeah, yes. God is a God of might and power and victory. But he does not leave us. <laughs> he says we need to be wise as serpents. Yeah. The devil is on your tail. And you had better know that. And that is why we need to be wise and careful. Daily victory, we can only get that by daily consecration, daily prayer, to fully obey the Bible. To fully obey the word of God. How will we know what is in the word of God to obey it? How? Because we take the time to open it and study. I'm sure pretty much all of us at one stage has been a student. <laughs> when you were getting ready for your exam, I'm pretty sure you didn't just open your textbook, maybe to any page. Okay, what page today? Okay, yeah. You read maybe a paragraph or two. Okay, I've read my textbook today. And you are going to the exam hall. Did it happen like that? No. So if you want to survive spiritually, yes. you've got to do your homework. That's true. That's true. 
prayer. Bible. You don't joke with it. And that old time word, consecration, (laughs) it means going back on your knees and telling God, God, whatever it is that you want from me, that you don't want, I surrender to you. That is what keeps this body in check. That is what keeps this flesh in check. Yes. That daily consecration to do the word of God. As Joshua 22, 5 tells us, well, take diligent heed. Not careless, just anywhere near. Diligent heed to do the commandment of the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Anything left? (laughs) With all your heart and with all your soul. And based on that, we realize that partial obedience, is it obedience? (laughs) So if it's not obedience, then what is it? It's disobedience. May God help us. Amen. You've got to beware that the devil is operating in this world through those, this same body we put on, the flesh. If we go back to that portion, 1 John 2.15, God said, for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. You see, God has deconstructed them for us. There are three segments, three, three major compartments. And it is a three-pronged approach that the devil uses for us. Oh, yes. Lust of the flesh, the senses, yeah, that we talked about before. When you no longer are satisfied, you are no longer satisfied, especially with God's way. <laughs> you have a problem. When God's way now feels, begin to feel constrained to you, must I? Why must, we, why must they say that? Is it they who said? Did you not read your Bible? Imagine Solomon. You see, this goes to just remind us that, you see, in this thing of serving God, it's not a matter of how experienced you are or how wise. Can you imagine that Solomon could get hooked? Hooked by the devil. What? Through the lust of the flesh. The Bible tells us he had over 700 wives. Only God knows what he was doing with all of them. Those of you who are married, to manage one wife, did you not pray before you could met her? And 700. (laughs) Plus 300 concubines. The Bible also tells us about Ahab that There was nobody who sold himself to do evil as Ahab. Why? Because of the lust of the flesh. Yes, wife. Yes, covetousness. Name it. Lust of the flesh. How do we actively fight back? Because the devil will attack us too. 2 Corinthians 10.5 tells us, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. Do you know how you bring it into captivity? Yes. When you bring it into captivity, it's not a, 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 a gentle thing. It is by force. Yes. No, you will listen to the word yes. of God. Yes. No, 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 no. I will keep you on that. Yes. You hear sometimes people testify, I will talk to myself. Yes. I tell myself what the word of God says. Yes. They're not mad. <laughs> They're playing the long game. True. Casting down imaginations and every thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. I'm bringing it into captivity. Every thought. Yeah. Ah, thought. Mm. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. What about the other one? The second portion of the devil's attack. Lost of the eyes. <laughs> you know that the eyes are the direct gate to the heart. <laughs> Many people don't seem to realize that... When they're talking of lust of the eyes, it is a very, very serious thing. What you see, you want to tell me it won't affect you, you are deceiving yourself. 
What happened to Achan? Joshua 7, 21. When I saw among the spoils, a goodly Babylonian garment, and 200 shekels of silver, eh? and the weight of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth, in the earth, in the midst of the, my tent, and the silver around it. You know what? There's something my father used to tell us. He said, The devil is wicked. Very, very wicked. As he's pushing you, go and steal that money. Go and steal it. He's also telling, uh, 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 Watch that, watch that boy. Watch him, watch him, watch him very well. This is Achan. He went to steal. Where did he think he was going to use it? But you see, when the lust of the flesh takes over, yeah. it, it, you lose, you lose, you lose it. May God have mercy upon us. Yeah. Lost of the, sorry, lost of the eyes. When I saw, can I ask you, what have you seen? That is now causing you a spiritual problem. If you are wise, you, you will actively fight back. That is why you see that those who are serious with God. TV, what is that? No. It has been labeled the devil's box from a long time ago, not just today. Films, you can watch any film. The internet, you can go anywhere on the internet. <laughs> the lust of the eye. Let us see what the wise man of God said. Psalm 119 verse 37. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity. Amen. And quicken thou me in thy way. Amen. When you see something that is not holy, it's not right. It is not quickening you in the way of God. It is going to kill you. Amen. Psalm 101 verse 3 says, I have said no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Lost of the eyes. <laughs> May God help. Amen. May God destroy it. Amen. May God give us victory over that. Amen. It is one of the crooks of the devil. But those who are playing the long game, they are alert. They are alert. What about the pride of life? Pride of life. That can take on many forms. Many forms. Self-projection. Like the peacock. You know, <laughs> it was... <laughs> It wasn't until some time later that I actually realized that the peacock, actually the tail is not naturally all is not naturally all awry like that. The actual the normal the normal position of the tail is just to flop down. But when he wants to show off, he will now bring that tail up, display it to the whole world. This is me. <laughs> Don't you know who I am? Yeah. Oh, the pride of life. But you see, may God give us understanding. Yes. After everything, maybe you are proud because of your job, or because of your education, or because of your money, or because of what you have, or what you don't have. But have you forgotten that? We have just done a burial this week. Me, I didn't see them bury any of his things with him. I don't know whether you have seen burial before. And I don't know whether any of those things went with that person who was buried. No. No. Oh, that they were wise. Yeah. Pride of life. Here on earth, it all ends that six feet under. Yeah. Beware! What does God say? Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let us read from verse 11. Deuteronomy. Chapter 8. <laughs> you see, there were, there were testimonies this morning of some of us <laughs> who have been around for a while. Well, I was still a, a, a small boy by that time, but I, I, I heard the testimonies. I knew what was going on. My eyes were open. Deuteronomy chapter 8. From verse 11. <clears throat> Word of God says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein. <laughs> Many of us now don't have house, cease, not just house. True or false? Okay. 
Maybe some are saying I only have one. Because all those ones that you have are broad. Yeah? That you have been building for however many long. Those years, in fact, if you saw one car outside the church, I remember, I, I say from time to time, the first day that it was Bra Pukwala. No, no, it wasn't Bra Pukwala. He came after. It was Bra. Ah, no, no. The clarinetist. I've forgotten it. Odulaja. Bra Odulaja bought the first car in Apostolic Faith Church, London. <laughs> after service that day, everybody went out to do special ceremony. Why? God has changed things around. Yeah. Many of us have two, three. Huh? God is saying here, what is he saying? <laughs> Whether you are in need, though, or you are in plenty, play the long game. Verse 11, beware, let's not forget the Lord thy God. Verse 12, let's go down at Eton and at full, and has built goodly houses and dwelt therein. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, everything is now becoming plenty, plenty, plenty. Not the time when you run from morning, early morning work, through to early, mini, early evening work, run to uh, studies. In fact, sincerely, I don't think we can cope with what they cope with now, today. I honest, only God knew how they were surviving. From morning to early evening to whatever, they will still go and do a full day's student's college, uh, student's university. And they will pass. Because God was with them. Yeah. God is saying, now when things have turned around, don't forget me. Don't forget the long game. Beware. Mm. Because it was God. Remember, don't ever forget where you are coming from. It was God who brought you out. It was God who redeemed you. What is the fight back? Well, how can we get to shake that off? Genesis 2, 7 reminds us. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils. This is where we begin to feel that pride coming in. Uh, but the Bible says, and the Lord God breathed into his formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And it was then that man became a living soul. So, the converse of that is that if God takes away his breath, I'll finish. Will that not keep us humble? John 15, 5 tells us, without me, you can do nothing. And God is warning us, love not the world. Enemy, for the love of the world is enmity with God. The world, as we said before, has a spirit. That spirit has a style. It has a way of manifesting. Whether it be in your styling of clothing, whether it be in your styling of hairdo or shoe do or whatever they call it, grooming, whether it be in the way you do your business, it has a way to manifest. And it will be clear, this is of the world. And God says, to enclose it, he has told us, love not the world. Why? Because he that loveth the world is enmity with God. Let us read that together. James chapter 4, verse 4. James chapter 4, verse 4. <clears throat> ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Yeah. <laughs> Those are some serious words there. Those that will be a friend of the world, they are enmity with God. <laughs> so please tell me, if you are now the enemy of God, I think you have a problem. Not Note also that there's no sitting on the fence. It is one or the other. In fact, in, in, in digital electronics, we have what we call and, or, exclusive or. This one is exclusive or. There is no way the two can go together. It is either one or the other. 
Remember what we said before, partial obedience is equal to disobedience. What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? Have you forgotten Deuteronomy 7.26 that says, Neither shall I even bring anything that is abhorred to your house. Don't even bring it home. Ah, don't touch it. Don't bring it home. He said, utterly detest it. But thou shalt utterly detest it. Do you know what it means to detest? To utterly abhor. Let me tell you what does that. It is sanctification. You know, when you are saved and you are sanctified, God puts a definitive, holy, holy love. Love of God and the things of God. That holiness detests things of the world. This morning, are you playing the long game? Or have you been caught by the glam, the glitz, the glam of life? Jesus is calling us to come and reason together with him this morning. He's reminding us that when Jesus comes to reward his servants... The Malachi tells us, those that are written in my book, they will make up my jewels. Yeah. Are you going to be one of them? Let us come forward and pray. Lord, please help us. Dear Lord, we want to watch and wait until you come. We know, our Father, that you are able to keep us to the end. We ask that this morning you return our first love. Take us back, O oh Lord, to where we started with you. We are praying that you revive every soul. We ask for healing for every sick body. We pray, dear Lord God, that you will save and that, Lord, you will sanctify and baptize with the Holy Ghost. Oh God, give us wonders and miracles today. Send us home with joy and rejoicing. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.